So today in my video, I'm showing how I take a three handle shower, tubby shower valve and use a mow and remodel kit and convert it to a single handle all from the front of the wall. The kit I use is the L2369EP. It's the chrome kit with the metal handle. It's a great kit. I stock two or three in my truck. I usually do an average of one of these a week. So now I'm using the three inch Milwaukee grinder with the dust collector. It doesn't really attach well to the vacuum, so I use a inch and a quarter by inch and a half tubular front coat. Works great. I run it in reverse. The reverse actually blows the dust into the collector, so it makes less less of a mess. It does awesome in radius. Um, I struggled on this one a little bit because I couldn't get the stems out and didn't feel like walking to the truck to get the tool to remove them. What I have learned, I used a multi-tool to cut the valve in pieces so that way I can actually solder it without having to struggle. And I kind of leave the pipes the same height because it lines up pretty well to the rough of the new mowing valve. So you did notice the spray bottle. I tend to keep the wall soaked. I actually make sure there's no paper. I reach up that there's no insulation. I keep my flame on my torch as low as possible so it doesn't really spread that far. And I constantly keep soaking the wall between every joint. So this step here, what I'm doing is actually heating up every single piece of pipe and basically wiping off all the solder on the pipe so I can actually have almost a clean surface when I sand it down.
Right now I'm pre-cutting the pieces out of the shower valve. Um, it's the same size every single time. It is two and a quarter, two and a quarter from the mowing shower valve with integral stops gives me the full eight inch rough. The next step I just did, I've learned that if the copper from face of copper to the finished wall is more than two and a quarter, the valve is too far in the wall. Another thing, I prefer to use Scotch-Brite than sand cloth. Um, I don't use a fitting brush, I just use Scotch-Brite in the fittings. I kind of stopped carrying fitting brushes about seven, eight years ago. Scotch-Brite's Scotch been working really well for me. I quickly realized that the cold side was definitely way too long, so I had to pull everything back apart again, cut the cold side about a three eighths of an inch down, re-clean it, and I was good to go.
You'd be amazed how many times I forget to fill my bottle up when I do this job and realize the water to the house is off. And the only good thing is behind me is usually a toilet tank, so I just take the bottle and fill it from the toilet tank. Um, works pretty good every single time. In this case here, I have the elbow pre-soldered for my uh, tub spout. And usually I take my Leatherman or the grinder to ab oblong the hole so I can get my elbow down or up and swing it upward. And being that the hole is oblong, I can actually lift it up to the top of the hole to get into the valve to solder it. Here I tried going down, didn't work out. I, made, I opened it a little more. When I got it to go down, I realized that since two by four was so close, it wouldn't make a swing, so I had to go upward, up. And I forgot to go up or up. There was a piece of five quarter sitting there that was just in the way. It wasn't supporting the pipe, it was just sitting there. I had to cut that out of the way so I can actually make the swing upward.
Here you see what I was talking about when the holes are a little oblonged. I, I'm gonna reclean it, I'm gonna reflux it. I'll be able to get it into the valve and then lift it to the top of the hole to get the pipe into the full fitting. Now that the valve cooled off enough, I'm reinserting the cartridge and the stops and put the pins back in. And I'm gonna go downstairs to turn the water back on. So mowing faucets come default in the on position. So always turn it 180 before you turn the water because it's always on. If you've seen the video, I don't ever uh, caulk around the discussion, but I always caulk around the half inch copper coming out of the spout. That's where the leaks happen, so I make sure it stops at that point.